Hello everyone, I'm Devika and I'll talk about how method documentations may be left inconsistent with the program's behavior as a code evolves. So consider this commit made to the Spring Framework over GitHub. The field allow credentials is by default set to enabled or true, allowing any site to make an XHR request with credentials. The developers realize that this is not a secure configuration and they resolve the issue by removing the setting. The figure demonstrates how this code change in one file shown on the left induces a critical documentation update for the allow credentials method in another file shown on the right. So as the project evolves, there may be several changes such as the one discussed. A developer may neglect to update the documentation, especially when it is not directly linked to the method to which the changes have been made. This may result in several documentation inconsistencies in a project. Motivated by this problem, we carry out a study in two phases to address five research questions. The first phase studies method documentations to assess how independently they are written with respect to the dependencies on various entities. In the second phase, we study how and why the documentations evolve as various commits are made to a project. We scope the work to indirect dependencies while the past research has focused on the direct dependencies between a documentation and its directly associated method. In the first phase, we study the prevalence of dependencies in the documentations. We shortlisted 550 random methods from 11 open source projects in Java on GitHub. The annotator checked for the satisfaction of at least one of the two criteria to label a method documentation as dependent. First criterion checks if the documentation contained references to entities such as URLs or method names. This indicates that the documentation content may need to be updated if these referenced entities are altered. Second criterion checks if a documentation includes a more descriptive information as compared to the content of the directly associated method code. For instance, it may describe functionalities invoked in the associated method. Hence, any change to the invoked method may likely require updating the indirectly dependent documentation. Based on the described two criteria, 341 of 550 documentations were labeled as dependent. A substantial presence of indirectly dependent documentations in projects indicates the need for developers to be cautious uh, in maintaining the code and documentation consistency. The remaining research questions address how the documentations evolve as various commits are made to a repository. We use this same 11 projects from GitHub and picked two years commit logs. This gave 27.5 thousand commits. We shortlisted commits containing at least one method where only the documentation was updated, as it was of our interest to see what triggered the update to that documentation. This resulted in 1288 commits. Five authors then manually analyzed the changes made to the documentations in these commits and labeled each as resolving a dependency if it satisfied one of the three defined criteria. The first two criteria was, were the same as used for RQ1, which were to check for the presence of references or description of other entities. The third criterion checked if the documentation changed due to a change made elsewhere, either in the same commit or a previous one. Based on the criteria, 592 of 1288 logs resolved indirect dependencies in the method documentations. Here are some terms that we use later. The first is a source, which is an entity which indirectly influences a documentation. It could be a code or a URL. A target is a method whose documentation has been affected by the source. This brings us to RQ2, which addresses how often is the dependence of documentation highlighted through user and developer discussions. 
32% of the commits resolving documentation dependencies were sourced from issues or pull requests which were specifically about the need to fix the documentation. The text in blue shows a comment in an issue report about fixing a link. The observation indicates that maintenance of documentations matter to the developers and the users of projects. We further studied how often is the consistency of dependent documentation with code maintained as the repository evolves. Our finding indicates that the documentation dependencies may not be resolved at the point of altering the source. For 13% cases, the documentation changes were sourced from past commits. In fact, we observed that on an average, the inconsistency may be resolved after almost 470 days from the day the change was made at the source. The next key analysis is to know the nature of updates that are needed to be made to maintain consistency in the documentation. The task becomes non-trivial, especially when the target and the source exist in different files, as seen for 55% cases. In fact, the source may also exist outside the repository in the form of URL to a web resource or an entity in another library. This makes it harder to track changes that may have introduced an inconsistency. We identified six categories of documentation updates shown in figure A. The most common one is a description update to fix the description of the functionality. Another common update is to indicate deprecation of the target method by referring to an alternative method in the documentation. The description update may further be categorized into eight as indicated in figure B. Presence of references in the description is the most common subcategory called the reference description. Knowing this taxonomy of documentation updates can be useful in focusing on the specific categories to design solutions to reduce the inconsistencies. We further analyzed four types of relations between the source and target to reason about the cause of the dependency. A referential relation found in 86.6% cases exists if target or the source reference to the other in the documentation. This explains why a change at the source could induce a change in the target's documentation. Then the call graph relation refers to the caller collie relationship between the source and target's methods. It was observed in 24% cases. We also studied the inheritance and interface relations between the source and target's class. In 50% cases, the source and target belong to the same class or interface. But we observed cases ranging from 0.5 to 2% where the two extended from same parent or implemented the same interface or shared a parent-child relation or implemented the other's interface. Inheritance aims at propagating properties to a child class. A change in either the parent or its child must not violate these properties. Similarly, an interface provides abstractions that the implementing class must adhere to. These relations explain possible causes of dependencies in documentation. To summarize, I discussed a study to highlight the problem of inconsistent documentation arising from indirect dependency on entities in the context of project evolution. The observations motivate a direct use case to build tools to highlight an inconsistency when making code changes and further recommend targets to developers that should be altered when a change is made to the project. Now, how can we identify these targets? One can leverage the discussed programmatic patterns. For instance, we observed cases of sources calling targets. This pattern can help extract potential targets from the call graph of the source method. Recommending these targets to developers can allow fixing their documentation if needed. On a concluding note, I feel that combining programmatic features extracted by program analysis and machine learning approaches may be a potential direction to aid in learning more unexplored patterns and building recommendation solutions. Thank you and I'll be open to questions now.
Okay. Uh, welcome back, everybody, on this uh, session on source code research and documentation. Uh, we have the second paper, uh, which is a paper from the technical track uh, on directly dependent documentation in the context of code evolution and study uh, by Devika Sondi and uh, colleagues uh, at IIT Daily. With us today, there's also uh, Raul uh, Purandar. And uh, I think uh, there's already some questions uh, from the audience. So Christina is asking, first of all, nice talk. And then I would love to see a support tool in the ID highlighting those inconsistency as we change the code, just as it does with the method signature, for example. How far do you believe we're far from this scenario? Okay, um, thank you for the question, uh, Christina. So. Um, we are already, you know, we've, we've begun with, you know, implementing the patterns that we've explored in this study. And we're trying to check, you know, how effective they can be, whether they would re result in, uh, you know, false positives in the sense, can they result in false re recommendations? So we're still working out, um, you know, certain patterns that we can explore. Uh, in fact, uh, in the past research, I do uh, know of papers which highlight inconsistencies related to um, refactoring related changes. But yeah, I think it, to the best of my knowledge, it has been scoped to just refactoring oriented changes uh, with uh, indirect dependencies. Uh, but yeah, I think. Uh, uh, I think in the near you know future, we we can actually have tools which could potentially um, highlight such inconsistencies. And in fact, uh, as I mentioned uh, as a concluding note, so we have just been able to explore four types of patterns. But um, you know, we, we believe that you know, in addition to exploring these programmatic patterns, um, uh, I think some, some support from machine learning community can actually help us identify more unexplored patterns. And that could actually help us come up with you know more refined recommendations of uh, uh, targets that get affected by a change at a source. Okay. Let's see if there's more questions from the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I have maybe just a curiosity. Um, I noticed. So there is this uh, very large uh, time to fix uh, was, uh, if I remember correctly, on top of my head, 500 and odd days to fix the documentation synchronization between code. Right. Uh, but also, uh, it was kind of surprising to see the standard deviation was so large. Uh, sure. Do you have a do you have a feeling for this result for the reason behind this result? Uh, so we we didn't dig deeper into why such a huge deviation. In fact, the range that we observed was you know it changed. Uh, it was updated somewhere between uh, zero days to uh, you know somewhere around thousand days. So, but my intuition is that you know probably that functionality was not as uh, you know frequently used. So so. Mm -hmm. If you notice, most of the projects in our data set are um, libraries. So that's how it turned right. out to be in the, you know, the top star projects that we picked. So in a library, you know, there are certain utilities which are, you know, more often used. And, you know, if people explore um, issues in those more frequently used libraries, they tend to be fixed, um, you know, at, at much more quickly as compared to perhaps yeah. other utilities. But yeah, certainly we, we would like to explore that, uh, dig deeper into to reason about this trend. Yeah. I was also wondering myself if he has to do with, for example, uh, and the culture of the community who develops the library, maybe they are very documentation oriented. I think. Um, okay, but thank you for the answer. Let's see questions from the audience. Uh, no, but I have one more, um, and this is related to result. I think was research question five. Mm -hmm. So this uh, the impact of having languages that have this uh, inheritance interface, uh, kind of right. Java object oriented kind of language, 
which kind of are naturally uh, are synchroni synchronized, I would say, uh, documentation about uh, languages that do not fall under this paradigm. No strong inheritance per se, most of, for example, uh, right. functional languages. Right. Yeah, um, I, I absolutely agree that, you know, these patterns are uh, dependent on the paradigm. And uh, given that uh, the, the current analysis we've done is mostly manual, we had to really, you know, restrict ourselves to, you know, one language. And that's why we picked Java, which is, you know, among, it's a, it's a widely used language. So we still feel that, you know, these results would still be useful to uh, a significant fraction of the community. But uh, yeah, as uh, I think exploring more languages is, is something uh, you know we would certainly like to explore in the future and i think that's a very good suggestion that exploring languages belonging to a different paradigm would you know altogether result in you know perhaps uh, mm -hmm. different patterns so yeah thank you for that suggestion thank you for your answer so we have uh, three and a half minutes mm -hmm. uh we can wait a little bit if uh, the crowd is warm up uh, with their questions uh, <clears throat> otherwise, uh, maybe I have just more like a curiosity uh, from my side related to the extension to the, to other form of documentation, for example, open API kind of documentation, uh, as water, those kind of things. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that that's, that's a uh would let me see I, I i'll really have to reflect on this how well the you know the identified patterns would work um you know with with open api specs mm -hmm. uh i mean certainly i do see uh, a referential pattern that we identify would uh, very likely hold there as well and that in fact we saw was the dominant pattern in, in identifying the uh, the sources so I see that pattern would certainly be useful even with those kind of specifications. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I think it would be a good exercise right. to explore. Yeah. All right. So I don't see more any more questions from the audience. Remember that at the end of this, uh, anyway, um, possibility to further discuss with the author, there we will have a pop up. Uh, window pointing to a discussion uh, where you can interact further. Um, that's going to happen within two minutes. So uh, we'll move on to the backstage for uh, the next paper in this uh, uh, session. I can leave the floor uh, to you in case there's uh, more questions uh, coming. Otherwise, of course, I really much uh, hope that you're going to hang out in the discussion. Okay. Thank you so much, and maybe we should give a round of applause to the audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.